Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Banana Island Living. My name is Shadi, and I know I always say I'm excited to introduce my next guest, but really, this this is a real a real joy for me to speak to this person today because we go way back. I mean, we've seen each other through thick and thin, and um, yeah, we say he's a brother from another mother. I'm especially delighted to to welcome Chief Charles Uwensui Edo Samwan S.O.N. Hello, Charles. Hello, Shadi. How are you? Very well, thank you. Ah, now, I can't big Charles up, so I'll just read a little bit of his backstory. And because his backstory is so impressive, I'm just going to start a little bit, and then later on I'll do another little bit, and then I'll do another little bit. Anyway, Chief Charles Uwensui Edo Samwan S.A.N., He's a renowned senior advocate of Nigeria, the Obasui of Benin Kingdom, and uh, his law firm has been so impressive over over 30 years. He has served as the Attorney General and Commissioner of Justice of the Edo State Government. He's also served as a delegate to the National Conference under the Goodluck Jonathan-led administration in 2014. Now, Chief Edo Samwan is a life member of the Nigerian Body of Benchers, the professional body concerned with the admission of prospective students into the Nigerian Law School. And in fact, he was the first alumnus of the University of Benin to ever be conferred with the, with the title of the Senior Advocate of Nigeria. Now, a topic of the moment is the Benin artworks. Now, Charles comes with, I mean, real in-depth knowledge of this particular uh, topic. In December last year, he was appointed a trustee of the proposed Benin Royal Museum by the Abba of Benin, alongside Nobel laureate Professor Wale Shoinka and Prince Unduka Oberg Um Yeah, he's a hero of the University of Benin, and he's also been very vocal about the repatriation of the Benin artworks by the British Museum, which was stolen from the Benin Kingdom in 1897. Now, what do you think? I mean, I know where you stand, but why? Because I'll tell you why I'm asking you in particular, because I know where your stand is. And I've interviewed quite a few people, artists, collectors, and the range of views is quite diverse. One school of thought is that because we don't have the structure and the infrastructure and the expertise to look after this stuff, why don't we just have an acknowledgement of ownership um, by the people who've got these items, pay us royalties, and we lend it to them in the meantime? What are your thoughts? Well, thanks for having me, Shani. Oh, no, it's my pleasure. Um, um, those sentiments you expressed, uh, being a brother from another mother, <laughs> <laughs> almost made me forget that you could be a big fox. <laughs> you know? No, no, no. This is about you. Don't <laughs> turn it on me. Come on. <laughs> the, yes. <laughs> the learn that you are. Uh, yes. But the matter of art, the repatriation of these uh, artifacts goes beyond art. Right. Yeah. In the first place, those things are seen by the outside world as art of curiosity. Yeah. You know, it satisfies their curiosity or they satisfy their curiosity mm-hmm. when they see them as art pieces. And therefore, there are things to be oogled at and um, loved. And, and take pictures. And about yes. And take pictures and yeah. all that. You know, so their new addresses become exotic places for people to visit as destinations for art. Yeah. But... They're not just art. A lot of them have uh, multiple significances. Um, some of them are historical records of events. Right. Yeah. And some I didn't them, think of that, you know. Oh, they are. I didn't. Re- I, I, I mean, now you mention it, it seems so obvious, but I don't know why I just didn't think of it in that context. In the, in the old days, if Shadi Mario visited Benin, yeah. and it was uh, an eventful visit, mm. it will be marked by a plaque. Right. Of Shade coming in, whatever gear she's coming in. Yes. Um, maybe um, uh, cutting to the above of Benin or going 
towards uh, whatever. Yeah. That would be it. That's the record. Yeah. You know, you know that uh, there are different forms of writing. Well, yes, I was just going to say, because they would say, oh, Africans don't record, which is not true. Uh, but that is a record. Until the Rosetta Stone was Exactly. Found, they, they had no idea. Yes. Yeah. yeah. They were gibberish. Absolutely. You know, I'm, I'm sure it's the same thing too for the Q&A form. Yeah. Writing yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And all that. So if um, we're invaded, and there was no transposition of cultures. Yeah. In the form of uh, British imposition of the culture on uh, us, the Benins, who mm. knows uh, how we would have evolved. Sure. You know, regarding um, these things in terms of record and all that. The, today, the instability writers in Igbo yeah. is still a mystery. But, yes. But, 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 there but, is a missing link. Yes, because but they are available for study. Hmm. They are valuable for study because, see, we didn't preserve um, because of the cl- humid climate we have here. You know, um, archaeology hasn't really done well in terms of unveiling, mm. um, you know, artifacts that will tell our story in that anthropologically. Yeah, because there's a lot of decomposition in this area. Yeah, very, yeah. very quick decomposition. Yeah, you can yeah. find cover humid climate and all. That. Especially burial forms. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You know, so um, those works are a lot more than art. If, for the most times, there are more other things than just being art. Mm. You know, when um, you can imagine when those sculptures or when those uh, uh, artists using this word now to describe them, we're working on those pieces, uh, the beauty of it probably was the least of their concerns. It was, it was probably secondary. Yes. Yes. You know, the spiritual significances and the messages they carried and the records they kept were of more importance. But it just so happened that they too were very good. Mm. You know, they were masters of their art or masters of their trades rather. Yeah. And um, so the world became gifted with, with the beauty, beauty of their works. But... If you look at it from another perspective, the perspective of the fact that the provenance of these of these uh, pieces yeah. go to an event that ended an empire. Yeah. You know, Benin was a great empire. Which our children are not learning in school now yeah. for some reason. Yeah. Tragic. Well, I mean, lucky we're talking, I'm talking to you now. You're yeah. going to school, so you know how to structure. Well, our history yeah. curriculum. You know, so... Was a great empire at its at its uh, zenith. It extended from the uh, mid part of the Niger Delta up to Accra. Mm. The elements of Benin people in the Cote d'Ivoire, actually. Wow, I didn't know that. The guys in Ghana are Edward people. Right. Yeah. Do you remember the seven? I think there were the seven brothers or something that were part of that. The Olupopo, Popo, the Oba, Bini, the Oromi, Odudua, yes. Yeah, I can't, I can't immediately recall all of them now, but I know that um, uh, Olishabe, Oshabe, the Bini, the Alafio yes, of Ketu, Alaketu of Ketu, uh, the Alafio for you, Alafio for you, yes, uh, the Shion of, uh, no, not Obomo no, Shion, yeah. the Bogon, the something Bogon, like that, yeah. yeah. And uh, stuff like that. Yeah, but you know, that's another story. Um, we agree, in Benin, we agree to the extent that um, um, Oromia came to Benin mm. as the son of Odudua. Yeah. And established um, a monarchy, re-established a monarchy, re-established Established, yeah. a monarchy that Odudua, I believe, was our son. It was a, it was the son of Giso Odu, the last of the kings that reigned in that dynasty. Right. Yes. So and he it's almost like a homecoming. That's right. That's right. But by the time he came to Benin, he was not born in Benin. He was born in Israel. No, yeah. You know, it was his father Odudua who sent him back. That, yes, who sent him back. And there was no it was not a, a war. There was no war. In fact, it was the Benin that helped him reestablish the monarchy in Benin against the rival Ivian. Oh, I didn't get it. That's another story. You know, so um that was a great empire. Yes, but we are where we are now. Well, hold on a sec. <laughs> I'm <laughs> not. I'm not holding brief for either side. I'm no, just no, no, playing no. the devil's no, advocate. No. You, you see, the truth is that 
for the Benins. 1897 was such a great earthquake. Oh, yeah. We haven't recovered. Well, it's not just the Benin, though. It's well, the whole of Western and well, yeah, African civilization. I'm talking about Benin. Yes. Right. It, it was it a imagine. terrible, yeah. terrible. I mean, we know the background story of the Berlin Conference in 1884, yeah. 1885, and all that, blah, blah, blah. But localize it to mm. us. Because we're yeah. talking about Benin now. It's the soul. You know, you know, and um, we haven't recovered. Yeah. Psychologically, we have not recovered. Spiritually, we haven't, we haven't recovered. Yes. Look at where we are part of this country now. We are, we've become an insignificant part of this country. Almost insignificant part of this country. The only thing we have selling us now is this culture. Yeah. This this culture that these works that have made us famous, they were still clinging on to. Yeah. You know, the guilds that render these works are still very active in Benin. Are they? Because yeah, I went I are. went to Benin and I looked for one of the I found a young man, well not so young now, whose father and grandfather were part of this guild and they were still using those traditional you know of course fire in the earth <laughs> of course method of course that will tell you the originality of yeah. it yeah they're still yeah. training people still raising people you know yeah. old Benin was organizing guilds yeah in terms of economy they're organizing guilds you had the uh, iron workers who made tools for farming and war and other implements yeah for you know society, you had the woodworkers as well. You, know, you had the woodworkers as well, who also did things for yeah. building and all that. Call them the Igbesama. The iron workers were a goon. The metal workers were a goon. Right. Yes. You know you had other guilds. You know, uh, area Miller. Like those are the people who raised livestock and all. Mm. So Bini was organizing guilds, and each guild had a head. They were all acting on the point of the other. Are they still... They are there. Very much. Yes. For every festival, they come to play their part. Oh, wow. They play their part. So it's never going to die. No. You know, so so now you are in a country where you have almost become insignificant because of 1897. Right. You know, policies are, 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 are promulgated every day that impact you negatively. You start wondering, oh, this couldn't have been. If... If... This that hadn't been, yeah, you know. So, so how do you think this bringing back will help? Well, first of all, well, it can do no harm. No, that's why I mean, for sure, it can do no first harm. First of all, yeah, that's exclusively related to ownership. Yes, exclusively related to ownership. Yeah, but there will be an acknowledgement of ownership. Not necessarily. Not not for every item. Right. You know, like I just told you, these items are in classifications. Right. right. The items that have significant spiritual significance. Is, let's take, for instance, the the uh, elephant, carved elephant tusks mm. that were embedded in the bronze heads. Yes, yes. Those things represent past orbers. You call them Hue Lao. They represent past orbers and there are shrines for them, altars for them. You and know, that was desecrated. Of course, yes. You know, so if you bring those things back, where, where, where are they going to be? Yeah. In the museum? Yeah. There are people waiting for them to propitiate them in their, in, in their peculiar spirituality. Mm. You know, because... You know, Bini Pantheism recognizes ancestors. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Big as, time. In some form of reality that they do intervene in their affairs from day to day. That is that is their worldview. You may have a different worldview. Somebody comes and says that once you die, then you are dead. Yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah, you know, the atheist says that, you know, I mean, your, your matter, matter you came from, matter you return, you decompose, you know, I mean, plants feed on you, and uh, blah, 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 blah. You know, but that's just your body. The biggest thing that the ancestors are part of them. They propitiate to them. They, they call talk to them. They incarnate in them. So you do all that. I know you. I know you. It's such a big part of who you are. So this is not just artworks. No, it isn't. This is spiritual. It is. This is cultural. It is. And this is um, history. History. There's another word I'm looking for, which is almost evocative of feeling, a strong feeling, and I can't quite think of the word because it's almost emotional. It is emotional. That's, that's what I think. Yes. So I'm glad I got a chance to speak to you about this. Thank you. And the museum, how's that going? Oh, it's, it's going well. Land has been set aside. Oh, wow. Construction was set in a, in, no, in no distant future. How has that been funded? Well, the 
The other will fund it from his own resources. Oh, wow. Yeah. But donor agencies... I was just going to say, shouldn't these characters who stole the thing in the first place yeah, be you, contributing you, to you, it? You'd be shocked. Some of those characters want to build museums in, 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 in Nigeria. In they Nigeria. They remotely control. <sighs> now, wow. <laughs> That's yes. They can remotely control. Yes. You know, I don't want to mention countries right now because yeah. like we're we are engaging them. We don't yes. want to start Oh, to there's no point burning bring out, your bridges. Bring, bring it out. <laughs> yes. Me, yes. You know. So, um, but there's a group called the Legacy Trust. Right. Whose um, principal aim is to ask for return of these uh, uh, works mm. away from the above. Good grief. Yeah. <laughs> Come on now. That's, um, yes. That's something that the Beninese won't have. No. You know, I mean, that's what the governor is also one of the promoters. And that's that's a major a major problem between um, the Beninese and the governor right now. Governor. So, but how does that affect the actual repatriation? If there's a schism between, or a division between... Well, things are being worked out. Okay. I'm sure in the end, you know, people will see sense. Yeah. You know, and they see that um, everybody should come together and... Um, John the Oba in building the Billy Murray Royal Museum. I think, which, which I think, was it, trustee. was it showing her that said, let's bury the hatchet in the head of the common enemy? <laughs> 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 so, no, this is, do you know, every time I speak to somebody about this, my view changes. <laughs> now you've spoken to me, I'm so solidly in your camp. And then when I speak to somebody else again, <laughs> Um, but know, I don't think now that you put it, it in it is, context, it is because you don't have all the facts. No, well, I didn't have all the facts, yeah. and also, like you said, I just I noticed how you describe them as works. You omitted the word artworks yeah. because that sort of put them in a box. Yeah. Now you're opening it up and explaining to me. Suddenly, I'm woke. <laughs> I'm woken up, and I'm thinking, gosh. You know, my, 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 my purview was so limited in, in, so yeah, I thank you. Now the other part of your, or the many different hats you wear is that of the renowned, famous lawyer that everybody is looking for. Now I'll just tell you what um, <laughs> Prince Charles, as I call him, <laughs> or Chief Charles has been doing. Um, he has served as counsel and representative to the Minister of Works and Housing and a fellow SAN, Babatunje uh, Raju Fashola. He's also served on the other side of the aisle, the former PDP gubernatorial candidate in Edo State, Pastor Osage Ize Iyamu. He's worked uh, uh, and been counsel to Governor of Ekiti State, uh, Dr. Kayade Fayemi. He's been counsel to INEC. He's been, he's been counsel to Buhari, President Buhari, he's been uh, counsel to the Benin Traditional Council, the Body of Senior Advocates of Nigeria, Minister of Interior of Nigeria, or Beni Rauf, I get question. Now, where, I can't pigeonhole you. You're like equal opportunity. So how would you, how do you reconcile all these different briefs and political? Uh, let me first of all come to, uh, I never acted for the Body of Senior Advocates. Ah, right, okay. Uh, but, um, I know I've done, I've done some works in my early days for the NBA. You're right. Right now, I'm in court against the NBA for the oh. CBN. Oh, God. <laughs> so how do you, how do, you and do we, this? When we did the case, I was working for INEC. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't find it. Really. No, but do you know... Even though I worked to uphold this mandate. Well, I was just going to say that how do you do it? And this is very in nimble-footedness to get both sides or all the different sides to trust you? Uh, I think it's um, integrity. Right. Yeah. Let me not speak for that, to that, uh, to the extent, of, uh, lest I start sounding uh, conceited, but but I, I think that's what it is. Mm. Because um, if those who come to me knowing my history... Mm. Um, They're still willing to... Yeah, it must, it must be... A statement of my integrity, right? Uh, which I'm very grateful for. That uh, that that is something uh, they gave me growing up. Those who raised me, mm. that, and I thank my parents wherever they are. God bless them, you know. So, and the other one is professionalism, right? If you take a brief, you know, you know who your client is. You must work for his interest at all times. 
which is a very topical <laughs> issue at the moment, yeah. as we have we have uh, one former SAN having this problem of not people not trusting. We, we'll just, gloss over that sorry, quickly. I, I no, 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 no. Colleagues. I'm just saying. I'm just saying <laughs> that it's a real issue in Nigeria. Okay, All right. that you are. As when you take a brief, yeah. you do it with your whole chest. Yes. Let's put it that way. Yes. As we say in Nigeria, right. integrity is but true word. <laughs> this one, you do it with your whole chest yeah. and you face that client yeah. and they trust you. Well, I, 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 I do. And uh, I'm never afraid to tell somebody else to try somebody else. Right. To yeah. t- tell somebody to try somebody else if they do not believe in what I'm doing. Yeah. You know, and uh, and that's what it is. You mm. know, it will be the height of uh, chickenry if you accept somebody's brief and start working against his interest. Yeah. That, that is... That's, uh, I, I don't know how... It's sad. It's a sad reality I of... Be able to speak yeah. Like yeah. I don't know how. And they'll go to church. I do. <laughs> go to oh, church. No, 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 I, 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 big yeah. church was. I'm yeah. Muslims too. You know. So, to answer your question, it's not about being nimble. Mm. It's about uh, being professional, yeah, and uh, putting your integrity out there for all to see. Yeah, yeah. You obviously managed to do that successfully. Well done. By the grace of God. By the grace of God, oh, <laughs> as we say, Nigeria, now God, oh. maybe, maybe I've not seen anything to tempt me. <laughs> no, but, but the trouble is, the trouble is, um, people don't really challenge, make that a focus of their lives, and that's what I find. It's not just in law; it's everywhere, isn't it? And I think you're part of a diminishing, sadly, a diminishing core of people who, yeah, this is what I stand for. I will do the best for you. And I will tell you, as someone who's been a former client, you tell you the facts of life. If you like, don't don't take the advice, but this, this is the truth. So, yeah, um, I'm dead impressed by that. What I do want to find out is your journey. Were you always going to be a lawyer? No. <laughs> what were you going to be? I went to be a soldier. <laughs> I hope your mother twisted your ear like yeah. a good Nigerian mother said what? She, she walked against it. Uh-huh. She walked against it because I was um, I was selected to go to the NDA twice. No. Yeah, but she walked against it. The second time she went to the NDA to tell them that I had no parental concern. <laughs> but I had signed all my forms myself. How old were you then? I was uh, first. I was sixteen. Second, I, became, I was fifteen. Going on sixteen. Second, I was sixteen. Going on seventeen. Gosh! So you were under age. Well, and that's why you needed the parental consent. Yes. Yeah. You you know you entered the military at my at my level that time. Yeah. Where you have to go into the academy. Yeah. You know. And yeah. Once you go into the academy, you signed up. Yes. You know, and, and as a minor, somebody else has to <laughs> give the authority. So she kind of it. Oh yes, she told me. <laughs> she told me I was a forger. <laughs> I forged my father's signature on my forms. So my father is not aware that. Uh, <laughs> she told him that. Yes, that this forger can't be in the army. She was doing everything she could to make sure yes. I wasn't. I wasn't. Uh, then what did you do? I rebelled for a while. <laughs> okay. I, I rebelled for a while. I was supposed to go, you know, Suka. Uh, I wasn't in school for a while, and uh, they found that I wasn't in school, and. Um, and they walked on me immediately. The next prayers, time, yeah. Nigerian parents yeah. and their prayers. Yeah. Then um, <laughs> I went to University of Lagos. I still want to study law to study philosophy. Wow. You know, uh, I'm doing a PhD now in philosophy. Oh, wow. Yeah, something I loved. I mean, philosophy was quite a good journey. Mm. I came to read law. I was blackmailed by my grandfather <laughs> emotionally. You know, he loved me so much, and I was my favorite person on all the earth. Uh, who told me that, look, had he gone to school that way, he would have been a lawyer. And since he didn't go, I should come and be his lawyer. I should do it for him. So you had no choice? Yes, eventually. But I know one of your passions is music. Yeah, true. Were you ever tempted? Well, we we played that route. We played it from, we brought a uh, part of the school band. In, oh, gosh. In government college. Oh, know, wow. A lot of exciting people who were, some have died. Some have also done very well. You know, we had a college band we brought out from uh, from um, school. And uh, while we are in the university, we were running the, the route, playing, playing Lagos, playing a battle, playing Ife. You're joking. Playing was it the time of Ofege and all these people? No, no, no. Okay. That was after. Ofege was while we were in high school. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, but we had a band. Yes. yes. Okay. We had some skilled musicians there. I know. Crazy. But you know, we're doing different things at the time. As was uh, jazz rock. <laughs> you know, we like to play like uh, the Mahavishnu Orchestra. Oh, wow. That's pretty intellectual. Fused, yeah, <laughs> yeah, fusion. Fusion, yeah, yes. We like to eat people like uh, John McLaughlin. I was always a Jimi Hendrix fan. I Well, I was just going to say. Yeah, Jimi Hendrix. Is, for me, he's still the greatest guitar. Voodoo Jimi Child? Oh, Ooh, Child. okay. We're going to get to that. We're yeah. going to get to that. In a, <laughs> we're going to get to that in a minute. Okay. So then after studying law, where did you go next? After studying law, mm. I went to the practice. On your own? Yes. I you didn't You didn't work for anybody else? No, no, I started my firm. Good Lord. Yeah. That was bold. Well, it was, um, <laughs> it was like a dare. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, I tell you, it wasn't funny at all. I was just going to say, I mean, that was bold. Yeah, I went homeless for a while. I went hungry for a while. Oh. You know, but the break came. But you also had that incredible self-belief. It had to be there. Yeah. But, mm. I, I always thank God for that. And my father's taunting, so, mm. you know, when he gives you an advice, you don't take it. I say, we'll see how far you can run with that. And you don't want to go back home with the tail between your legs that you feel. Like, yeah. You know, so that's also the So you have that Shangri. Your, uh, <laughs> Shangri. Which I, I thanked him for yeah. it. <laughs> no, but I, do you know, the reason why I'm also curious about your journey is I know most of your siblings are abroad. Yeah. You were never tempted to take that route? Uh, no, actually, I was my when my brother went to Berkeley mm. in 1975, I think. And you know, I said route, which is American, not route, <laughs> which is British, because I know all your siblings went to America. Yeah. So I thought, oh, <laughs> let me use the American word. But somehow, it never, it never, it never occurred I to you. to go to the military, I told you. Yes. Yeah, so that was, I think that was basically what that was for. Or maybe you have this passion for Nigeria? Ah. Uh, we always, we always have passions for Nigeria. We all do in yeah, some sort of way. Yeah. Nigeria. But I think my, 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 the glamour that the military held for me was the kind of things I was allowed to read. Right. As a child, you know, all those war stories, second world war yes, stories, yes, war, yes. war, battle and all that, those war novels. Did you, know. you, did you watch, um, Combat and all those, yeah, yeah. 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 all those, da, 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 da. starring yeah. Vic movies. Morrow movies. and Rick Jason. Movie, <laughs> yes, longest day. Alistair yeah. McLean, the Green Berets. yes, yes, you know, those glamorizing shocks. the military. You know, the Dirty Devil. The, yes, um, yeah, the, the Dirty Dozen. Dirty Dozen, right? Yeah, Dirty Dozen. Yeah, you know, great movies. Then um, I, I become a. Um, a war aficionado. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, I could tell you the story of the war right from when Hitler entered the Sudan Ten land. Good grief. You know, seized Czechoslovakia, and no. Poland, you know, and next France, uh, Vichy France, you know, Dunkirk. Good grief. Mir- yes. Of Dunkirk. Yeah. You know, the war in the South Pacific. You know, I, I, I ate up just Michinas. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and thank God you didn't go into the military. Now, tell me, with all your thoughts about the the war, you're staying in Nigeria, you're seeing both sides of the political divide. What do you think of the Nigerian product and what's the future? Are you optimistic? Are you pessimistic? Uh, what's, Are you what's the Nigerian product about? Project. project what's the Nigerian project? project? I think we'll get it right in the end. But- Short, medium, extremely long. Uh, I mean, when we get it right. Look, it's a complex question. Yeah. You can't get a simple answer. Okay, tell me. I've been part of this process. I know. That's what I'm asking you. National conference. I know. And what has come of that? Yeah. Some of the things have come up. Okay. When we hear people talking against restructuring, those guys are not friends of Nigeria. Right. Nobody's going to accept Nigeria the way it is. By of, nobody, you the, mean? Yeah, I mean, I mean, parts of the country. That's right. I okay. Mean, if I say nobody, talk about people are feeling oppressed in this country. Let's, yeah. Let's not. Uh, and you mean north, south, and east, yes. and whatever, you everywhere. Know, let's let's not let's not shy away from it. You know? Yeah. I love this country. I mean, we are playing the nation's nation's cup right now. You can know where my heart is. Can you imagine everybody is but rooting when, Nigeria when, though? When I, when I go outside this country, I'm proudly Nigerian. Yes. Proudly, proudly Nigerian, you know, what and all. 
So you believe in Nigeria as a corporate entity, but with restructuring? Of course, yes. Okay. It gotcha. has to be restructured because the way it is right now, we're not working efficiently. No. Uh, a state is going to be in an airport that we, they will hand over to the federal government. Does that make sense to you? <laughs> yeah. Why don't you just, you know, change the constitution and let states be able to get their own airport? So, but the constitution as the way it is it, and the political combination the way it is, is it possible to change the constitution at all? It is possible. Is it probable? It is probable. Even the way we are at if the moment. If we don't voluntarily walk towards it, it may happen by chance. And Gosh. That's what um, we don't want. No. Because when that happens, there'll be figures. There'll be yeah. figures and statistics that, are, that won't be pleasant. Yeah. But it is better that we do it uh, constitutionally. We we'll do it, negotiate it, you know, amicably and make some good sense. Are you optimistic that this will happen? I, I'm more optimistic that it may happen by chance. Okay. And, and that's that's what I dread. So it's not, yeah. But but it will happen. Short term, medium term? Short term, we still suffer a lot. We still suffer. Right now, the economy is not doing very well. And um, the political scenario is confused. There's bloodletting all over the country. Yeah. There's insecurity all over the country. So short term, you know, we need to negotiate ourselves out of this, this misery. And then properly plot a path that will take us away. Don't forget that the way Nigeria is, it's not just about Nigeria. If Nigeria puts its act together, countries like France, Britain, and all that will suffer. I know. Yeah, you know, so... so There's interest. a lot of interest in us not getting our act yeah, together. Yes, you know, yeah. and, and every day you, you hear stories about France being part of uh, the Boko Haram thing and all that. You know, you think it's just speculation. It's not no, just no, 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 no. Knowing what I know about Libya, I mean, who else would believe in the bona fides of these people? I don't know who Can would. Can you imagine yeah. if we're able to process our oil? Yeah. yeah. I mean, the whole story of importing is <laughs> it's, it's heartbreaking. When we are proving every day that Nigerians are refining oil in I know. the forest. In the forest. In the forest. And, and we're stopping them. Yeah, because, because we, can't, we don't want to regulate Relate, them. Relate, yeah. We don't want to regulate them. You know, what the big deal? We're losing so much money. So why are we doing... Why is that happening? Rules, no, rules, but why is that rules, happening? Uh, you have to ask those who are in power. I yeah. Mean, I really don't understand. Well, I think you have more chance of asking them than me. <laughs> No, you're running a podcast. No, I can tell. I'm not surprised if the, I'm surprised if the, if the minister of oil comes here tomorrow to talk no, to you. No, 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 no. <laughs> Me, I'm not into politics at all. This is the closest I'm ever going to go into even asking those questions. I'm not interested. Right. I, I'm interested in voting, but I'm not interested in their in their issues. Now, tell me. I want to know about you. What are you watching or on DSTV or Netflix? What are you up to? Can I name one or two or three? Yes, of course. I'm watching Isibaya, which is a South African um, We We carried it, yes. I'm watching Rihanna. Oh, what's that? Shakri, Shain Shakri, uh, Syria. On Netflix no, or DSTV? DSTV. Wow. I'm watching um, Enache. What's that? It's a Bine series. It's a life about... Wow, on DSTV? Of, yes, on DSTV. How do you have the time? You're so busy. Yeah, we have to, I have to watch You're something. You're a polymath. No, I have to watch something. Yeah, I know. I've spent my life growing up watching everything from Hollywood. You know, I know. And Bollywood too. Yes. <laughs> I saw, my mom used to take me to the movies and see Indian Good movies Lord. those days. Yes, Bollywood. Yes. Love in Tokyo. <laughs> uh, what was that song? <laughs> Adia, Napoani. Remember those songs? <laughs> Shashi Kapoor. Love in Tokyo. Oh, love in Tokyo. Bangladesh. <laughs> Bombay to Goa. That's so sad. <laughs> this is our life. Name all the westerns. Yeah. We saw all the westerns. Yes. So why shouldn't I watch? It's like, true. Watch, um, things about yeah. us. Yeah, yeah. And these the stories are. Look, you should find time to watch them. I will. I will try. They're, they are enthralling. Wow. Well, at least we'll get more of a perspective of our own, um, of our own history and our own lives, rather than you know we know more about the crown than we do about Benin Kingdom. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So Sunday morning church or chill. Church. Yes. And uh, are you a morning person or a night person? I'm a night person. Are you a night person? Yeah, but... Uh, well, I know you wake up terribly early. Yeah, but... Yeah, that's... that's to fly to, abroad, have, to fly to cases and to things like that. that. I have to do that, but I don't sleep. I don't think there's any time I sleep before one o'clock. Oh, my goodness. Sometimes they go to three o'clock in the morning. Gosh. Yeah. 
So who do you admire most? Well, let's not talk about Jesus because Jesus is ultimate. It's a given. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mandela. Mandela, why? That was a man that proved to the world, including these black African leaders who, yeah. who have shamelessly <laughs> put themselves for their country. Ooh, that's cold. That, <laughs> yes. that, that, that the country yeah. is worth dying for. Yeah. And you, you see how South Africa has uh, come out of its big problem yeah. with, with the least bloodshed. Oh, that's a man that's truly large. Yeah. yeah. But I, 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 one, one, I don't necessarily subscribe to it, but they said that um, he was too easy on the whites. Uh, no, no, no. Let's, let's be sensible. Yeah. There's a way that thing could have been done and South Africa would still have been born in. Yeah. You know, is that... He is stooped that, to conquer, they say. No, Mandela was, was as radical as they came. Yes. Don't forget yes, he was right. a freedom fighter. I know. Yeah, he also Bef- won- before it became fashionable. Of course, yes. Yes, you know 27 I mean? years. You know, staring, staring in, in, in his face. face. Yeah. Staring the future of South Africa in the face. In yeah. Mass, like, this is the way to go. He didn't buckle. No. But I, I, I'm I, more of a Winnie person myself. But hey. Winnie. Winnie. Winnie Mandela. Yes. Oh yes, I also admire I, her. I, I yield to no one in my admiration. Nobody, of her. nobody is rounded. No, I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Okay, if you could live anywhere in the world that's not Nigeria, where would it be? <laughs> Zanzibar. <gasps> I saw a picture you took in Zanzibar, and I'm, I'm going to. I've told you, put an NFT on that one because it's stunning, stunning, stunning. Why Zanzibar? Such a pristine place. Unspoiled. Yes. You can't take a plastic bag into Zanzibar. Wow. You know, I took the, I was lucky to have, I was fortunate to have been able to take the ferry from Zanzibar to Dar es Salaam. You're right. On returning to Zanzibar, I bought a bag of fruit. Yeah. And I couldn't take the the bag. So you carried it in your hand? (laughs) No, I had to leave the fruit. Put it in your pocket. Because because there will, there'll be a lot to pay yeah. for. It. No, but that's how that's what you need to do. I wish we'd do that in Lagos. I'm going to write the governor and beg him to do something about carrier bags. It's it's heartbreaking. I've gone to the beaches here and you see the carrier bags. It's it's soul destroying. The beaches. Well, we sort of have beaches. Go to the, go to the streams. <laughs> yeah, I know. Or gutters, oh, blocked gutters. So just to let you know. Okay. If you had your last hundred thousand dollars, what would you do with it? I traveled the rest part of the world. <laughs> that you haven't been to. Okay. <laughs> okay. What are you reading at the moment? Um, I'm reading uh, the Shakiri. Ah, who by, wrote that? By William Moore. Not a Nigerian. It's a Shakiri man. It's a Shakiri man. Yes. Fantastic. And yes. where does it start from? It started from. Shakiri's provenance in Benin. Right. Up to the interregnum in 1848. Wow. And um, uh, up till um, up till reading it. But it had some interesting things to say about some Shakiri personages. Well, do you know, what I totally admire about you is how not only are you totally into the law, but the amount of information and reading you do on such a wide you know, range of stuff. If I ask you about African Nations Cup, now you're on it. If I ask you about the Shakiri, you're on if, it. If you ever see my mom, blame her for that. Uh, she's into football she, or to reading? Yeah, yeah. She, 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 she incorporated the reading habit too. Wow. I remember at five, taking me, me and my brothers to the British American Library in Berlin. Wow. To borrow books and return yes. books. Put us in a car, you know, return books, borrow books, those bedtime stories. Yes. I traveled as a child all over the world reading books. Books about East and Central Africa. Wow. Books about China. Yeah. I still remember those books. Good Lord. Those better yeah. Do you remember those better Yeah, friends? yeah, I know them well. So what are you listening to at the moment? What's on your Spotify or iPod? What's your uh, current favorite song? Um, that your neighbor hates you for listening to? <laughs> <laughs> you want to bamba? You want to bamba? You want to hang with the big boy? <laughs> you're on kete kete, you're, you're on kete kete. Don't you drink drink water and drop up. <laughs> I but heard. that's that's on the light side. It, yeah. Serious music I listen to. I listen to a lot of jazz fusion. Okay, like um, weather report. Okay, gosh. Yeah. Weather report. Are yeah. they still going? No, no. But the, the, the walks, yeah, the Chick Korea. Yeah, uh, the walks are there. Um, 
Return to Forever. Return to Forever. Gosh, you know? that's uh, uh, blast from the past. Yeah. A real blast from the past. Serious guys, you know, avant-garde. Yeah, I listen a lot to uh, Miles Davis and the guys he works he works with. And just this afternoon in my office, I was listening to Wes Montgomery. Oh wow! Paul Chambers, yeah, and Bates, yeah, Billy Cobb on drums. You know, those, those are people. Mitch Mitchell on drums. Uh, yeah, man. That's, that's, <laughs> yes. that's, that's my vision orchestra. Yes. No, no, Mitch Mitchell was no, no, Jimmy no. Hendrix. Yes, Jimmy Hendrix. The experience, yeah. It was, uh, Mitch um, Mitchell on drums and the man on the guitar. Uh, Jimmy <laughs> Hendrix. Yes, Jimmy <laughs> Hendrix, yes. <laughs> and uh, your favorite, favorite musician of all time? <laughs> Jimmy Hendrix. Jimmy. Yeah. Favorite song of Jimmy Hendrix? Not for the child? No, the one cries Mary. Oh. <sighs> He was such a, a, a one-off. The the guitar solo, yes. The Wind Cries Mary. Sometimes it make me cry. Oh, I mean, it was. You know, th- somebody else who does that for me is Santana, Carlos, oh, Santana. Carlos Santana. Oh yeah, he's, 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 you know, he's, he's he's in the group. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. I mean, um, if we are talking about great guitar players, um, Santana for current popular yeah. music, Santana. The other guys like Buddy Guy. Buddy Guy, yes, but yeah. they didn't have as high a profile as. Well, yeah. uh, we're talking about blues guitar players. Yeah, there's blues I mean, guitars. I'm just I talking mean, about. Um, yeah. What's his name? Um, Eric Clapton had to come down for him. Oh, please from don't. Hospital. I don't want. I don't. I've, I've cancelled <laughs> Eric Clapton. No, he's a, he's a blues player now. Yeah, well, he's a blues guitar player. He's a now. copycat of no, the no, original no, no, blues. Don't, no, don't, no, don't no, say no. that. No, we'll never music, agree about the music, Eric music Clapton. Is universal. I have cancelled him. No, no, no. no, no. What he used to do very with the, the yardbirds? I don't like his politics. What he used politics. to do with the yardbirds and cream? Yeah, it's different from what he plays now when he's jamming with the blues guys. Yeah, but he, you know, I, I have no. Let's just say I don't like where he's. Um, he's not on the right side of the angels. That's my. That's I don't. My I don't know his. Politics. Yeah, well, I'll tell you another time. So describe yourself in three words. I like to think of myself as uh, dutiful. Dutiful. I, I think I work hard. Hard worker. I believe in God. Godly. No, I, I don't believe in God. <laughs> <laughs> and I thank God I godly. Only <laughs> one I comfort me <laughs> when the people come back to me. <laughs> I'm a okay. family man too. Yes, that's yeah. four words. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. This is our last one. Tell me a funny joke. <laughs> That's a difficult. Okay, tell me a joke. It doesn't have to be funny. Just okay, tell me a joke. Was uh, Jabu man? Okay. Um, is it Jabu man? No. Okay, it's Jabu man. Okay. Very wicked medicine man. Yes. It was so strong that um, whenever he put a curse on somebody, the person died. <laughs> okay. So he came to his farm one day. I found that somebody had. Uh, Defecated in his farm. <laughs> okay. And uh, he cost the person. The person died. So, uh, so they were to do him in and they followed him to the bush and they, <laughs> he defecated and they brought somebody now scooped up the es- his escritor <laughs> in some leaves and brought and put it in his farm. So he now cost <laughs> the person <laughs> the person who defecated. And he, and he ended up enjoying himself and uh, killing himself. <laughs> <laughs> so the Yoruba say, if you throw a, st- a stone in the market, you'll end up throwing it on your or your family or you, yourself. You don't know, you don't know who is going to get into it. Yes. I don't, I, that, that must have been a very dry joke. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. But do you know, it's not easy to come up with a joke. If you ask me now, I can't come up with a joke. Okay, there's another one. <laughs> oh, okay. Tell me, quick. Yes. Another one. Yes. Uh, <laughs> somebody went to the Diviner, say, look, tell me, my father has died. He mm-hmm. said, hey, tell me if he has a message for me. Mm-hmm. Said, oh, look at his hair. Your father, what's your father's name? He gave it to me. I said, no. He said, he has no message for you. <laughs> but the person I'm seeing as your father is fishing in Lagos Lagoon right <laughs> Right there. Did he laugh? I, he tried not to laugh. <laughs> Poor 
audio and it's going on to laugh. Well, thank you so much. This has been such, I don't know. It was like just us chatting. It's not even like a podcast. And it's so nice to be able to catch up with you again. Thank you. Thank you so much. If people want to get in touch with you, how do they do it? Do you have a social media handle? Um, yes. You can find it on Facebook. Okay. You can also find us on Instagram. Okay. As, what's your handle? Um, Charles, C-U-E. Okay. Yeah. You can also, my phone details are out there. Oh my goodness. <laughs> You're well, really liberal. We're lawyers though. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, yes. They better be paying. <laughs> Yes. Well, thank you so much. Um, Chief Charles Edo Someone is a one-off. And I thank you very much. So don't forget to subscribe. Give us a rating and uh, we'll talk to you very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. Take care. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.